Um, I wanted to quote something. I'm a bit nervous because Laura like would have said, do you mind if it's recorded? And there was a sec I, I, I just wanted to read something from a book I just read recently, and I thought it might be appropriate. It's a book by Sebastian Barry, um, a very good Irish writer. Uh, it was shortlisted for the book in 2005, a book called A Long Way Home, or A Long, Long Way. So I think it's a beautiful book. And it's, I, I was thinking of it because actually large sections of the book are based in the castle here. A young man goes off to fight in the First World War, Great European War. And uh, his father is a, an inspector in the police here in the castle, and his house and his building is in the, is in the ruins of this castle. Um, but that's not why I thought I'd refer to it. I just thought there was one passage when I was reading it, which I thought was maybe related to the work you're going to do over the next few days. It's, it's a scene set in the book where they're in the trenches in, I guess, near the Somme. They're in the Dublin Fusiliers, uh, a regiment, an Irish regiment in the, in the British Army at the time. And there's um, a sergeant, Christy Moran, who's speaking to them in a lull in the long, um, terrifying lulls that they had. And I'll just quote from it, and you'll, you'll excuse the bad language, that's why I'm nervous about it. It's in the book. And, and, and I can't avoid, if I get the point I want to use, I, I can't, uh, it'll be murderous to Sebastian Barry if I, if I, uh, if I change the words. Um, and as I said, it's, uh, it, it just maybe in some way makes me think about the work you're doing. The corporal, the sergeant, Christy Moore, says, you see, you can't keep good news from an Irishman. Are you crazy? In the old days, a new sound could cross from London to Galway in a day and night. Is that a fact, Sarge? Said Peter Hara after a moment. Anyhow, said Christy Moore, looking suspiciously at O'Hara, a good song would cross from London to Galway <clears throat> because the bellhops in the hotels would be singing it from heart to fucking heart. It would be in Galway by nightfall. But now it's not songs, but bad news that crosses and crosses the world at that, from Irishman to Irishman. The British Army is full of us. It should be called the Eppin Irish British Army. <laughs> there was a long pause, a silence, then as the Lister is imbibed this notion. Well, there you are, Sarge, said Peter O'Hara. I just like that notion that of Irish people, this is before radio, but just passing by word of mouth, from bellhop to bellhop, a song. You'd hear a song in Piccadilly, or in West End in London, and it would pass overnight through contact, people telling stories, people passing on stories. And I thought just in relation to the work you do in radio, that was relevant. It was maybe one of our characteristics. We've moved on and we've changed. We're all twittering now. It may be in the same sort of way, but it's still a characteristic of, I think this city in particular, there's a real incidence of kind of a foreigner comes in to ask questions. Where are you from? What are you doing? Why are you here? Who do you know? And I think that's a, a good part of our characteristics. I think it's something maybe we're re returning to more in these difficult times for that message of about Irishmen passing to Irishmen, the shock and news of the state of the world is very true of our country and of the wider world today. I was very taken by Colin Tobin, another Irish writer, writing in the Irish Times last Saturday week about how we need people now to tell us stories in a way that gives us some sort of vision, some sort of sense of purpose and sense of meaning. Maybe beyond just what you get, the kind of, I, what I described to you, the everyday media correspondence. I was, was an Irish writer, journalist here, Con Hoolahan, I greatly admired. Um, he said, kind of, journalists tend to be maybe in the immediate area of journalism, be a bit, bit like a flock of starlings, all flying in one direction and then flying back in a different direction. And I think what Colin Tobin was saying in the paper last week is we need maybe the likes of the people involved with a bit of time in radio documentaries and uh, uh, features where they can actually go a bit beyond that and think maybe outside, maybe a bit not a starling but a different bird singing a slightly different note because I think that is, will give us a sense of reassurance in these difficult times and remind us of the real strengths and abilities we have undoubted as a people. That was always an ability to welcome people here. I think it's actually increased because we're now much more international. One of the great things that has come, I see in the development of this city in the last 10 years, is a lot of hoo-ha and nonsense came, but there was an openness to this city which brought people from all over the world. I met a young woman today, just as I was out canvassing, who was Dutch, American, 
and came from Barcelona to work here in an American company. I just thought that was, I like that. I like that kind of mix and international aspect of our city now. And you're adding to it, and you're very welcome. And maybe in your four or five days here, you'll pick up on some of that aspect and it might inspire you or give you pause to thought. Um, but more than anything else, uh, I wish you the very best of luck. I think the EBA is, a, or EBU, is a great example of the cooperation we have across our continent. Uh, we are not fighting wars now. We are working together. Uh, I think the even prospect of war, of the likes of that war that these men were savagely torn up in, is no longer possible. We are very much part and a heart, even if we're on the edge, of that Europe. And it's in that uh, spirit that we welcome you. Thank you. Thank you very much.